Uh, for the writing purposes, sometimes, but not usually. You know, for the writing, uh, the creation of the music and the songs, the lyrics, the melody and everything, I'm really just kind of getting the melody together with the music, the movements, trying to, I'm considering dynamic, but when it comes to the details of the sound, that's often inspiration as I'm doing it. You know what I mean? So I don't necessarily think that oh, this sound, this song's going to be great when I di the guitar and fuzz it out and run it through my Terra Echo pedal or whatever. It's sort of that's all. That's a little bit post creation of song for me, but really an exciting part of the journey for me. I did. I wanted it to. Um, to have a bit of dirt, I wanted it to be driven a bit more by guitars. Like in my past records, uh, like I went for them to be quite beautiful and quite lush and sonically pleasing. I wanted this to be a little more jagged in it around the edges and certainly a lot more, have a lot more of a raw feel in the way it was captured and the mistakes. Look, Davey was responsible for, look, he co-produced it with me, so his influence. And the reason I got Davey on board is because I got a huge amount of respect for him as a, as a writer and a player himself. And I know that whatever ideas I had or we had, he'd be able to pull them out of his massive knowledge of how that stuff is created and kind of make it happen. Um, yeah, we did, we definitely went for a bit of a Britpop feel with that. A lot of, a lot of kind of reverb, on the sounds, um, yeah, and it kind of, mind you, I will say it, it, just at this point that uh, we had Stephen Schramm, Steve Schramm coming and mix it, and he took all of the songs to like another place. So the, the stuff that I handed him was like, pretty happy it sounds, yeah, Steve, go for it. And he sent it back, it just went, holy shit. <laughs> he just brought things to life and gave it a real vibe. Yeah. quite different, quite, um, I felt like it didn't really have direction, even though I, I started with the with an idea of direction, be a bit more kind of raw and guitar-y and still stories of, from my heart, from my life. Then I just couldn't see the forest for the trees. Um, I gave it to Steve Schramm at one point and said, do you reckon you could, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and he gave it back and went, it's not ready for me. <laughs> Got a lot of work to do and that was probably a bit of a good slap in the face actually because then I just kind of gave it the focus it needed to yeah, get it done. The songs were written as a whole, like I would, I would write the songs. As for the, the parts, that was something that like in the studio, the band, like our drums and bass and the initial guitar, we worked at the parts and then we just press play record and go, that takes good, that takes better, we use all of that. Um, even for the detail of the guitar, I would sit there going, what do I want to do, what do I want to do, what am I trying to say here? And I'd get some ideas and then go, donk, and just record it and maybe have a couple of passes at it and then that was it. So I, yeah. I worked at the parts and then I just wanted to capture however the heck I delivered them, I guess. Um, there's a couple of songs for different reasons. Like there is a song on there called The Bully, which is perhaps not a spectacular song as in, a, in a sense, but it's a very close to home kind of storytelling sense of song. So that's important. Uh, In the End is, is a pretty important song for me because I wrote that when I was, started writing that when I was in India and I was just walking around the streets of Delhi, kind of going, thinking about what the heck it is we do or I do as a musician, as a songwriter, as a storyteller. And, and lyrically, it really translates to the idea that, you know, what am I doing? I'm trying to make a connection with a stranger, basically, and share my life with you so that you can make sense of your life or maybe I'll make sense of my life through your reactions as a listener. So that song's pretty important in a sense that it sums up 
what, we're try what, I, what I think we're trying to do with music. Main guitars for this record were my trusty 73 Tele Deluxe, which was kind of the first guitar I bought in Powderfinger, where my first real, real guitar that I bought in Powderfinger. Um, that, I've got a Fender 74 Strat that I used a lot, Gibson J45, which I use for all of the acoustic parts. The other guitar that I pulled out of my storage container, which I'm so glad I did, and I intentionally did for its sound, is um, is this uh, Roland GR500 guitar synth thing. So basically the, you know, it's, it's a Roland guitar with a bunch of pickups and a, like a, a D sub multi pin thing that goes to the massive synthesizer unit. It's a 70s bit of gear, which then goes into the amp. Um, and I use that for a couple of guitar solos because of its kind of unique, very unique texture. Um, and then as a rhythm guitar as well, because you can play it like you're playing a synth, but it's a little bit more screwed up than a traditional virtual synth. So yeah, they were the main kind of guitar weapons, Fender and a Roland synth. Yeah, so the, the uh, foundations, I guess, the drums, Graham Pogson, who's played with the Bamboos and does his own stuff. stuff. Uh, Luke Hodgson, he plays with Meg Mack at the moment, does a whole lot of stuff on bass guitar, he's amazing. And those two have played together a lot before. And the other thing I think that is pretty key for me with this record is I wanted it to be quite different to anything I'd done. I wanted it to have a bit of a retro feel and a real kind of organic feel. And everyone involved I've never played with before, half of them I'd never met before, part of the, the process of music for strangers with strangers and see what the heck happens. So it, the album certainly could have done that. And I almost abandoned it at one point, but that's another story. Um, and then, yeah, Davey I've known for a few years. So he was the one person that I kind of had played with before. I had Vicar and Linda Bull come in and sing some backing vocals. Um, Zanny Kolak, who's a local Melbourne violinist, composer. She composed the strings for it and played them. Um, and Davey, Davey and I didn't really get to do a traditional producer thing where we'd go, well, here's a whole week aside, we're just going to sit down and nut it out for a week. We just, because we're both quite busy, we just kind of grabbed time when we could together. And that, at some, t at some point, it was quite frustrating because I like to get things done. But in the end, we both sat back and went, however that worked, it worked out well. So whenever I had Davey in the studio, I'd be just squeezing him like a sponge for whatever I could. So I had him play guitar on bits and pieces where I could. And yeah, Davey was invaluable for the, the time we had, you know, awesome. Um, just, it's a lyric from one of the songs. Um, and metaphorically, it just kind of sums up the way life seems to go for me. It's coming in and it's going out. And I think it's just, it's something we don't have control of in this world where we try to control everything. The, the tide, you know, it's nothing to do with us. And also, I wrote a lot of this record um, down on the end of the Mornington Peninsula by, by the ocean. So literally, you know, it's kind of all kind of makes sense for me. Yeah. That remains to be seen. You know, I know that for me, the starting place and for any good song, you know, I've got to be able to play it with just my voice and my guitar. And if I can do that, then that's great. Everything we add to that is just kind of icing on the cake. But live, I think it's going to be really cool. The songs are not designed in the sense that we can just jam bits out on stage, but post creation, there are a lot of bits in a lot of these songs that I'm going to stretch out and just bring back a bit of jamming to the, see what happens on the night. Totally enjoyable. I get to eat five star food whenever we do these events. So the tuning fork is something that I started with a, um, a chef friend of mine, Clayton Donovan, who's um, Australia's only hatted indigenous chef and he creates high end food using native bush herbs and spices and flavours. And so we came up with this idea a few years ago of like a, 
a real kind of intimate dinner and show sort of thing where we kind of share our stories through well, music and storytelling through that and Clayton through his food. And yeah, we've traveled, we're, as I said, we are in India last year. We've done a few kind of private winery event things. And it's, really, it's really great. I mean, it's literally a case of me, we stand up at, at the top of the tables and then talk about what we do. And then I'll kind of play a few songs and we just have conversation. Then I sit down and enjoy some good food, come back out, play a few more songs. And it's a pretty good gig. Was that the story where I interviewed Richie Sambora? Yeah, yeah it was, wasn't it? Um, I was pretty excited actually. I think everyone was pretty excited about whatever they had to do for it. Um, but me being a bit of a Bon Jovi fan, you know, I was in year 10 and 11 when Slippery When Wet came out and it's Richie Sambora. It was pretty, pretty awesome. We had a good chat. We sort of promised each other that we'd have a jam next time he was in town. That didn't happen, sadly. <laughs> but yeah, it's always good. It's always interesting actually doing something on another musician and artist. Yeah, not something I've had the chance to do very often, but I, I do quite like it. Ooh, hopefully, hopefully a lot of exploring of this record. Like for me, music and an album is the initial creation and recording, and then it changes as you go. And I quite like that second step of the um, an album's life. So I'll hopefully take it into many different musical environments with a band, strip back, theatres, big festivals if possible. Yeah, I'll just kind of wait and see and then I'll probably get on to making new music. Maybe. I mean, I almost walked away from this record thinking it was a pile of crap. You know, it's like when you have a house and all you can see is the flooring and the foundations, you go, there's nothing here. Got to persist with it, stick with it. Most proud of, I mean, it has to be Powderfinger in general because, because the fact that we stuck at it, we stuck together um, and we achieved, a, I mean, we achieved a lot as a band, we're very, very lucky to sort of be where we got to. Um, a lot of work, you know, we didn't just fall into that position, we worked hard at it. Um, on a personal level, I suppose me just stepping up and feeling comfortable as being a singer-songwriter. You know, I was a guitarist in Powderfinger, always a songwriter, but never the front of the stage. So personally proud that I can carry and hold a show based on my own merit. You know, I've had to, I've really had to win over everyone and anyone with my solo career because I don't really, lead singers of big bands, they can kind of carry the flag a bit. People know, they're familiar with the sound of his voice. No one's really familiar with the sound of my voice. And, um, and I tried to push that a lot with my previ previous records. This record, I've put a lot more weight back into my skills as a guitarist, I suppose. So, yeah.